friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. It is that time of year where it's time to look at all of the books that I read in 2019 and let you know what were my favorites. I'm so excited about this video. I'm doing it a little bit different this year. I'm going to have another video where I talk about my kind of Goodreads year in review because I'm still in the middle of a couple and I want to finish those up before doing that. I'm also going to talk about my worst books of the year and I'm also going to maybe do some kind of a like a superlatives or kind of a year in review to talk about more than just these favorites. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you all of the books that I gave five stars to in the year 2019. I am not very frugal with my five stars. When I finish a book, if I'm loving it, I give it five stars. I try not to think about it too much because it's really subjective, right? So if I finish a book and the feeling that I have is this should be five stars, I give it five stars. I know some people are a little more stingy with their five stars and that's totally fine. S star ratings are such a subjective thing anyway. I have a really hard time with them and if I stop to think too much, it makes me crazy. <laughs> So with some of these books, I'm not exactly sure why I gave it five stars. When I look back, I don't always remember all of the things about these books that made them top reads for me of the year. But out of the Goodreads system of five stars, these are all the books that I own and a couple that I'll put a picture in that I gave five stars to this year. I am there in no particular order until the last ten. The last 10 will be my most favorite books of the year. And how I chose them is I wrote out a list. I don't want you to pause it and see, but I wrote out a list of all my five star reads. And then I just went through and kind of put a star next to any of the books that I thought were standouts among the rest. And then from those star ratings, I kind of loosely organize them from 1 to 10. I started with 10 and went up to 1, which has ended up to be my favorite of the year. If I were to do that again tomorrow with this list, I might have a different 10 set of favorites. But tonight, as I was looking at all my five-star reads, these 10 are my top ones. But before I get to those 10, I'm going to go through all of the books that I gave five stars to in 2019. So you can see all the books that brought me joy this year. I had a fantastic reading year. I would say, well, we'll talk about it in my Goodreads year in review, but I really think my overall rating was pretty high this year because I had 32 books that I gave five stars to out of almost 150. That's a pretty decent percentage if you ask me. So here they are without further ado. I'm not going to talk much about uh, most of them, but if I can't help myself, I can't help myself. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen was a retelling. I listened to it on audiobook and absolutely loved it again. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I just read in December. Also listened to it on audiobook. Also loved it. Saw the movie on Christmas Day and absolutely loved it and can't wait to see it again. <laughs> Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna always makes me cry and she did not disappoint with this one. I'm really excited to read the sequel in 2020. Of course, there's some middle grade on this list, and this one is Pages & Co. series is Pages & Co. This one is Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. I absolutely loved this book. A book for book lovers, for sure. I don't actually own Betsy Was a Junior, but I'm holding up a Betsy Tacey book. I did not give all the books in this series five stars. Actually, this was the only one, for some reason, that made it onto the five star list. I don't know why, but Betsy Was a Junior by Maud Hart Lovelace. I really loved the whole series, but for some reason that one stood out to me. If You Want to Make God Laugh by Bianca Murray. South Africa set right at the ending of Apartheid. Absolutely love Bianca Murray. Got to hear her talk in 2019. Definitely a bookish highlight of the year. Another middle grade, The Colors of the Rain. This was this one was sent to me by Little Bee Books and I absolutely loved it about a young boy, has redemption, he's learning about race, makes some choices that he later regrets and works to make things right. Thought this was a really good read. Ah, another very recent read, A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. This was such a lovely Christmas read. If you have children, this will be a really fun read aloud. Made me laugh out loud, was tender at times. Um, just absolutely loved it. Five stars. A Contemporary Romance, which is not very common for me, but this one had a lot of depth to it as well. Um, Catherine Center's Things You Save in a Fire. Fantastic. 
One that will not be new to you, or not a surprise probably, The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Yay. By Alexandre Dumas. I love this story. It's not without its faults. It definitely had its slow parts. I did listen to this on audio, but it was worth the five stars and I'm so glad that I read it and I loved it. It will be one that gets reread someday. The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. Yet another middle grade. This is by Karina Yen Glosser. I love the family. I love the kids. I love the antics they get up to. This is another great one to read around the Christmas season because it's set during the Christmas time. Fantastic. You shouldn't be surprised to see Frederick Bachman on this list. <laughs> Britt Marie was here. Follows a character that we first meet in My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. I did not like her at all in that book. This one helped me to understand her a little better and I actually loved her by the end of this story. Fantastic. Such a good read. My most beautiful book that I own, <laughs> The Biggest Story um, by Kevin DeYoung. This is a children's picture book, sort of, of the story of the Bible, like the overall story in the Bible. It kind of tells a little bit about everything. So fantastic. Definitely worth five stars. Uh, Totally different direction. The Dry by Jane Harper is a mystery, somewhat suspense, mostly mystery, set in Australia and out back. Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear, the beginning of a long series of mysteries, historical mysteries. Loved it. A Fall of Marigolds by Susan Meisner, another book that was very emotional. This one is set around the events of 9-11 and I just love it. I This is my second Susan Meisner and I really need to read all the books I own by her because I have a feeling she's going to be a favorite author. A favorite author that I already have is Ella Montgomery. This was Jane of Lantern Hill. I'm really excited to branch out and read more of her books than just the Anne books. And this one was just lovely. But a young girl sent to live with her father on Prince Edward Island and loved it. Loved it. Loved it. A surprise five star for me was Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I think if I hadn't just heard her speak the week before I read this book, it might not have received five stars because it's very strange. We have ghosts, we have a lot of superstition and spiritualism set in the Deep South, but I loved her writing. Having heard her speak right before this, loved the perspective that I had on this book because of hearing her speak. So, so good. One of my most early books that I read in January of last year, but was such a fun ride, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. She's such a, she's, such a good storyteller. She just brought me right along into these characters lives and this drama, <laughs> kindergarten mama drama, <laughs> this one. So fun. Another great storyteller, Agatha Christie. She weaves a brilliant mystery that kept me guessing, wanting to try to figure it out. I think I suspected just about everyone and I think that's the point. And then there were none. Such a good read. I didn't look at my list. So there's a couple that I don't own. I just kind of went through the piles of what I own. But I also loved this year uh, The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise. So, so good. Another middle grade that I absolutely loved. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens was also not in my top 10, but a book that I definitely loved. I was a little nervous because people talked about the nature writing a lot and nature writing is not a buzzword for me. It's actually something that kind of scares me. Uh, but I did love Where the Crawdads Sing. So good. It was definitely a very hyped book and it did live up to the hype for me. So I know it didn't for everybody. Here we go. Now, final 10, top 10, coming in at number 10 for the year was Kindred by Octavia Butler. This is a science fiction. Octavia Butler, I think is the first African-American science fiction author, something like that. But this one involves time travel. Um, we follow a, a woman who travels back in time to uh, from the 1970s to uh, a southern plantation in the south during slavery and as a black woman that was very dangerous for her and she goes and has to rescue the the plantation owner's son and then ends up living there for a amount of time she doesn't know how or when she's going to be pulled back into her own time period but she goes back multiple times and every time has to save his life um, so they develop this bond it's a very interesting take on both a black woman's experience from a modern a more modern, not so modern now, but a modern at the time perspective, but also a plantation owner's son. Yeah, just fantastic. Really loved this book. It made me think. It was captivating. Such a good story. Number nine is a book that I don't own, and it's a, it's a genre that I don't read very often, and I wanted to include it in my top ten 
mainly because of that, and that is a thriller. I tend to stay away from thrillers, but I really did like The Silent Patient by Michael Ides. Alex Michael Ides? Michael Ides? I don't know how to say his name. Here's the picture. Um, I loved The Silent Patient. I read this with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. It was one of the first buddy reads we did together and really kind of solidified our friendship. But also this book, we flew through it. It was a very captivating story, but also there were some twists and turns at the end that blew my socks off. In this one, we follow this woman who is accused and convicted of shooting her husband in the face five times, but then goes silent and ends up in this mental institution type of thing. And we also follow a psychotherapist who has taken it upon himself to be the one to help bring her out of this silence and wants to kind of save the day, but also get to the bottom of it. It's not always very believable. He takes some liberties that I don't think psychotherapists would be allowed to take. Um, he's not a detective, but he kind of acts as one in this book. But yeah, the twists and turns, they blew me away. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, number eight, I really loved reading Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. This is a Japanese historical fiction about a young girl coming of age story. She is brought to the um, big city. I forget the name of the city, but she is brought from her country home to the city where she is trained uh, at first as a house servant and eventually as a geisha. Um, we follow her and her experiences and also her loves and s slight obsession. And we learn a little bit about Japanese history and culture along the way. I thought this was a fantastic book. I buddy read this with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures and absolutely loved reading it with her and absolutely loved this book. And it's one that I uh, still think about every now and then. Fantastic read. So, so good. Number seven. Of course it's a middle grade. And I have one more on this pile too. I have a lot of middle grade books in my top reads of the year because I love middle grade. But I'm going to include Sweep, The Story of a Girl and Her Monster. This is by Jonathan Oxier. This was the group read for Middle Grade March in 2019. And it was fantastic. Historical fiction, love. Middle grade, love. But we also, um, so we follow this young girl who is a chimney sweep in Victorian London. So we learn a little bit about the culture and times of Victorian London, what it's like to be a chimney sweep as a girl, which was mainly a boy's profession, a young boy profession, um, and the life of these young children who were sometimes kidnapped, sometimes um, sent to work as chimney sweeps in order to help provide for their families. Um, but we learn about this young girl and the way that she is uh, bullied by some of the other chimney sweeps and one day gets trapped in a chimney and escapes with the help of a piece of coal that becomes a golem, which is a part of Jewish folklore. So along with this historical fiction aspect of things, we have a little bit of this magical folklore side of things um, where this golem, her monster, uh, becomes a, a big part of this story, a big part of her growing up, a big part of her her thought process and how she learns and grows and yeah it's just fantastically written fantastic story I was captivated from beginning to end and absolutely loved it so made a place onto my list number six is another historical fiction a world war ii historical fiction and it is we were the lucky ones by georgia hunter i first heard about about this book on what should i read next podcast with ann bogle georgia hunter was actually a guest on her podcast and talked about her book and i was i was so excited to to get it and read it um this is actually a historical fiction but based on the true stories of georgia hunter's grandfather his siblings and parents and their experience during World War II, where the war brought them and took them and the things that they had to go through and the survival of, of them and just just that experience. So it is based on a true story. It is historical. It is fictionalized to become a story, but it is based on things um, from her family's history, which I thought was so, so cool. So I really loved that. Number five is an author that you've already seen on this list, and that is Kristen Hanna. I'm going to talk about The Great Alone. I loved this book. It was very sad. <laughs> we follow this family who moves to Alaska to kind of get a fresh start. The father came home from the Vietnam War, I believe, and is just having a rough time of it. I think he probably had a rough time of it beforehand. He's a bit abusive and the mother and daughter we follow mainly this daughter and her experience and from her perspective of this family moving to alaska they move in the summertime but they immediately need to start 
planning and prepping for the long isolating winter. Um, but it's about this family and their dynamics. And it's very sad. Um, but Alaska is its own landscape, its own character almost in this book. It was cold and, and isolating, I said already, but it just was uh, very moving. I loved some of the side characters, some of the people that they meet when they're in Alaska. Yeah, I just, I, Kristen Hanna, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the way that she writes stories really connects with me. Um, and I know she's not the most literary author out there, but she's most definitely one of my favorites. I just absolutely love her. I love her. Number four is the last middle grade that you'll see on this list. And this was a surprise favorite of mine this year. And that's Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. I really don't like this cover, but I loved this book. I loved Salamanca, the main girl, the main protagonist, the main uh, storyteller in this story. She is goes on a road trip with her grandparents who are just absolutely wonderful. I love their relationship and the way that they love their granddaughter and, and portray a, just a healthy, positive, loving relationship as elderly people. I loved them. I loved the way that her telling the story helped her to process things that were going on in her own life. So it just was a story within a story. So, so good. I really was not expecting to like this as much as I did. So I'm thrilled that it made it onto this list this year. Number three is another author you've seen already, Hum, If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Murray. Like I said, I got to hear Bianca Murray speak this year. This one also takes place in South Africa. This one takes place in the 1970s outside of Johannesburg where we follow two different women, Beauty, who is a mother who travels to Johannesburg because her daughter goes missing. She ends up becoming a maid in a household where there's a young girl named Robin. So Beauty and Robin are our two main characters in this story. The two come together during this time of the Soweto uprising. Soweto is a neighborhood um, outside of Johannesburg that was all where black people lived uh, at this time during apartheid. It was so much racial segregation, so much race issues in general in South Africa at the time. So we just follow Beauty and Robin and in Robin's case she is a white young girl raised by by white parents who are very racist and the way that she processes things and grows and and also beauty as she is on this search for her daughter and her character is just so strong and amazing. I absolutely loved this book. I loved Bianca Murray's writing. I found so many things to underline and tab and quote. Very, very uh, simple writing but not simple in themes and thoughts and I absolutely absolutely loved it it's not overly flowery that's maybe what I'm trying to say I, I don't get along well with overly flowery words or ones that make you think too hard to get what they're trying to say Bianca doesn't do that look I'm on a first name basis I just absolutely absolutely love this book number two is another author you've seen already it is Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. This guy, ha, similar to Bianca Murray, he writes in a way that just throws punches at me as the reader. Um, he has these themes and sentences that just captivate me. I know it doesn't connect with everybody, but I really love the way that Frederick Bachman writes. And Us Against You is a sequel to Beartown. We still follow, we kind of pick up the story where Bear Town ended. So I don't want to say too, too much, but we're in this hockey town in Finland where the whole town is captivated by this hockey team and is involved in some way. Um, in Bear Town, we follow one of the star hockey players from one of the teams. He sexually assaults the daughter of the rink director and everyone in the town is kind of forced to take sides. It's very heavy, uh, somewhat sad, um, but there are these moments where you just realize that not everyone who's good is good always and not everyone who is bad is categorically bad. Um, there is no not really such a, a black and white line. Bachman just does such a good job with characters. Sometimes he writes really quirky characters kind of like Britt Marie but all of his characters have a lot of layers and a lot of depth and I just love that about him. Ah! I'm, I could gush about him forever but that is my number two book of the year and I think my number one book today, tonight, when I'm looking at this list, is Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. This is a nonfiction. Who would have thought that I would have a nonfiction book as my number one book of the year? But this year, 
and maybe it's because I just read this in December. It's fresh on my mind. But this year, this is going to be the number one book for me. I just find it to be so important, uh, especially coming from a, a privileged white person perspective who may not have had a lot growing up. I definitely understand that I come from a place of privilege because when I read this book, some of these situations are so incredibly shocking to me that, that in my lifetime, 13 year old kids are convicted and condemned to a life in prison or even the death sentence that, that young people, that black people, that other minorities, um, that, that mentally disabled people are convicted with such a lack of justice, of compassion, of, of mercy. Um, and I, it was really good to read this. It was hard. It was hard to read this, but I think it was very important for me to read this book. And I don't know where to go from here after reading this book, but I do feel like it was important for me to read. It was easy to read in the writing style, not easy to read in the contents. It just, huh, it's very moving. Um, I don't really talk even about what it's about, but Brian Stevenson is a lawyer and he started the Equal Justice Initiative in Alabama where he works with prisoners, often prisoners on death row or who have life in prison, um, who have been wrongfully incarcerated and helps to get their cases before the courts again and in some cases get their convictions overturned, which is awesome when that happens. It doesn't always happen though. Yeah, it was just very heavy, very good, very thought provoking. Um, and definitely a book that I'm really glad that I read this year. So I'm putting it at number one, but there you have it. There are so many books that I just love to gush about. And I am thrilled that I had such a great reading year. I'm hoping 2020 is just as good, if not better. I would love to hear what are some of your favorite books of the year. Let's talk about that down in the comments below. If you have thoughts on any of these books that I just talked about, I would love to hear your thoughts about those as well. Did I encourage you to put any of these on your TBR or move them up your TBR? I would love to talk about that as well. You guys know I love talking with you down in the comments, so let's chat down there. And until next time, bye.